Did you see the project video I published the other day about making this basket from scrap wood? It's a really fun project that makes a great gift or something to sell if you're into that. And it's not done the way you may think it's done. So check it out at the link below if you haven't seen it. It is well worth five minutes or so of your time. Also at the end of this video will be a special surprise from our archives that I found. It's way back from 10 years ago in the early days of this channel. It's a three minute parody that still makes me laugh. So stick around to the end if you wanna see that. But first I wanna talk about something that is a bit controversial and I know many of you are going to have some strong opinions about this and I do wanna hear your opinions. So please leave them in the comments below. Now this all started yesterday morning when I fell into one of those YouTube rabbit holes. And I ended up watching a couple of videos that featured this, the Festool Domino. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's a handheld power mortiser. It's a shockingly handy tool that might represent one of the biggest innovations in woodworking in generations. At least that's how I would describe the Festool Domino. Others might describe it as an obscenely overpriced gimmick designed by an evil corporation to extract money from gullible people who think pricey boutique tools can compensate for the crushing weight of their incompetent craftsmanship that infects their souls. That seems to be the two sides that people fall on. They either love the domino or they hate it. At least on social media, there seems to be little room for middle ground when it comes to this thing. Why? What makes this tool so polarizing? Is it the green paint? Some people say that's the most expensive color in tools. Is it tool envy? It does seem that most people who are hating this tool haven't actually used it. Is it that some Festool users, particularly online, are a little bit arrogant about it? Or is it really just a principled stand over perceived price gouging? Again, I wanna hear your comments below. Why do you love Festool or hate Festool, particularly the Domino? But let me give my opinion first. I think it mostly comes down to price and relatability. Now there are two versions of the Domino. This one costs about 1200 bucks. They also have an XL model for a whopping $1,700. Now keep in mind, you can create the same loose tenon joinery with a homemade jig and a hundred dollar router. But it is undeniable that the Domino is much faster and easier to use. And if this thing was say, $200 or $300, I think there would be far fewer people with their panties in a wad about it. But $1,200 to $1,700? Well, I can understand how some may feel that's excessive. So is Festool needlessly gouging us? Honestly, I have no relationship with Festool and I don't know how much it costs to make one of these things. It's certainly a very high quality. But I do know a bit about the tool world and the cost isn't just in the manufacturing, it's in the development. Now I'm not here to defend Festool's prices, but I hear the price gouging argument about a lot of tool brands, and I think it's worth clearing this up. Every new innovation, especially the true game changers, just costs more money when they first come out. Because the folks who put in the time and the money and the brain power to come up with the new idea and who then developed it and engineered it to perfection and they go through all the mountains of legal hurdles to bring it to market, they have to recover those outrageous costs and they have to make enough profit to make their effort and substantial risk worth taking. That's why we have the patent system that gives them a period of exclusivity free from competition when they are the only ones who can make and sell their product and frankly, they try to get any, as much as they can for it. But without that incentive, we'd simply have far fewer innovations, especially in a niche craft like woodworking. So when people say that Festool and SawStop or whoever should just give their patents away for the greater good, I say, I'd rather have these amazing tools, even if they're a little expensive at first, because without that, we wouldn't have these innovations at all. Everybody seems to forget about the fine multi-master. That was another true innovation for woodworking and carpentry and even the medical field. It was originally used to remove casts in hospitals. Today, you can get a cheap oscillating multi-tool for as little as 25 bucks. But for decades, there was only one and it cost the equivalent of $600 in today's money. That's a lot for an oscillating multi-tool. 
And of course, folks bashed fine back then like they do Festool today. But eventually the patents expired. More brands came in to compete and the tool got much, much cheaper. And likewise, Festool's patents are going to expire on the domino. In, in a few years, we're gonna see knockoff versions on the market. Same thing with SawStop and any number of other truly innovative products. It's not a perfect system, but it's what we have. And without it, dominoes and tools like this just would not exist. I know that's little comfort to someone who simply can't afford to drop well over a thousand bucks on a handheld mortiser. But frankly, as I said, I'd rather go through a period of high prices now with the promise of lower prices later instead of the tool not existing at all. Now that's my opinion on the price issue that seems to be dividing so many people over this tool. The second issue that divides folks seems to be brand bias. People are either for it or against it simply because of what they believe owning a Festool or similar premium brand says about themselves or about others. It reminds me of when I first started out on YouTube. I was looking for a power sharpening system and I had my eye on the Tormac. Now here's what I said. Let's face it, we all want a Tormac. I mean, the thing is big and fast and accurate and a complete setup will cost you well over a thousand bucks. I spent months trying to figure out how to sell like, part of my liver to try to buy a Tormac. But then I figured out a way to get a system almost as good for the price of something less vital, like maybe a kidney or something. A lot has changed since then, and I don't just mean I've got better looking. Over the last decade, I've built a business and earned a good living, so I can afford nice tools now. But there are some key points in that clip that I feel very strongly about. You see, back then, I considered the price of the Tormac, which was more than $1,000 with all the jigs, to be excessive, especially for my budget. It simply was out of my reach. And I always thought it would be. But I didn't bash the whole brand because I couldn't afford it. And I wasn't jealous of other people who could. Instead, I found alternatives. I made my own jigs. I modified other tools to get the job done until I was in the position to get the machine that I wanted. And when I did get one, I didn't become a tool snob about it. I haven't insisted that you have to have a Tormek to be a good woodworker. In fact, I've done just the opposite. I've still made lots of tutorials about sharpening with stones and sandpaper and homemade jigs and less expensive options for people who can't afford or simply don't want to spend the money on a Tormac. See, I may have some nicer tools nowadays, but I'm still the guy who gets excited about a homemade tool or a jig that just gets the job done. That's why when we built a door a while back, I didn't use the domino to build it. Instead, I took that opportunity to show in detail how to use a router and a homemade jig to do the job. Because the last thing I wanted was for people to think they couldn't do the job without a $1,200 tool. But try as I might, sometimes folks just love to be triggered over a tool they see in the video that they don't like or they don't have. And unfortunately, those folks just do themselves a disservice. Let me give you an example besides the domino. This is a Harvey table saw. I handpicked Harvey as a sponsor because I believe in their products and what they're trying to do as a company. I get though that some people can't afford or simply may not want this table saw. What I don't get is someone who says, well, I can't make that project because I don't have your fancy tools or who tells me that I'm out of touch and they can't relate to my videos because my saw is expensive. Really? You can't relate to someone cutting rectangles of wood out? Your saw won't do that? Sure, this saw has features that yours may not have. There are definite advantages to a big cabinet saw, and this one in particular, but it still uses a rip fence and a miter gauge to pass pieces of wood over a spinning blade. The process is the same. So why is it such a great mental leap from watching me cut a dado on a big saw to you cutting a dado on a smaller, older, or less expensive saw in your shop. So before you reject something because of a tool in a video, ask yourself if the techniques being demonstrated are truly what's unrelatable, or if you're really just looking to punish someone for daring to show a tool or a brand that you don't have or like. Now wait a minute. Isn't the process different when you're using a domino? 
The way this tool creates a mortise and tenon joinery is entirely different from how you may have to do it in your shop if you don't have this tool. So if you're watching a video about building a chair, for example, and you hope to build that chair yourself, I can understand that you may be frustrated if this is presented as the only way to get the job done. So in that case, I suppose I can see both sides of the issue. Now, while I reject the notion that people should even show dominoes on video because not everyone can afford it, and there are people saying that, I can sympathize somewhat with the, difficult, with the difficulty that some woodworkers may have in relating to a project that is made with a tool that is so different from the process they would have to use. I don't use this much on camera, so it's kind of a non-issue on this channel, but regardless of what video you're watching, if you see someone using a domino, don't reject the video because of it. I'm going to link below this video to a tutorial I made on loose tenon joinery. It essentially shows you how to do the same thing with a router instead of a domino. Bookmark that and next time you see a project where someone is using a domino and you want to build that project but you don't have a domino, just refer back to that video and the, and the project video will still be useful to you. That way we can all be happy no matter what color our tools are. Now in a minute, I'll show you that parody that we made a, about Festool Fanatics about 10 years ago. But before I do, I want to mention that the uh, Empower Tools has their CRB7 router base on sale. Now this is something that a lot of my viewers have been really interested in. And right now it's $45 off if you get the full bundle and that turns your router into maybe the most versatile tool in your shop. You have to use coupon code SPRING45, all caps, at checkout. And it's only good through this Sunday. So I'm going to put a link below this video to get you where you need to be. All right, here we go. He once got a splinter just to feel the wood in his veins. He grows mahogany and little flower pots on his deck. Adorable. He owns no whetstones because tools could never be as sharp as he is. Charles Neal once called him with a finishing problem. It's true, he did. He doesn't even know what pine is. The postman delivers his wood ripping magazines directly to the bathroom. He never washes his hands after using the toilet because it might dilute their talent. He's been called a woodworker, not a fighter. But he's also a fighter, so don't get any ideas. Watch out! At Yale, his majors were wood and working. He reads Moxie and Rubeau in the original Greek. Old masters. You can see his raw talent from space. Festool. If there was a woodworking gland, his would be larger than most men's entire lower intestine. He can stop a saw blade with his teeth. But why would he? Safety. His wood glue never sets up until he tells it to. His sawdust smells like expensive cologne. Festool scent. His shop dog cuts tails first. He once punched a harbor freight clerk. That's right, you heard me. He can say butt joint without giggling. He requires a herd of wild horses just to supply him with glue. He taught Sam Maloof to work with Wicker. The rocking chair guy. His mustache alone has built more than a lesser woodworker's entire body. When it's raining outside, it's because he's playing something beautiful on his handsaw. His personality is so magnetic, he has difficulty using wood screws. He can make you a better woodworker just by walking past your shop. It is said he can disassemble any tool blindfolded, but getting them back together is iffy. He can drink denatured alcohol, and it's said he has never gone blind. Don't do that. His organ donation card simply lists his multi-talented hands. How's he do it? He's responsible for Roy Underhill's trademark style. He's Stumpy Nubs, the finest woodworker in the world. Even the most simple of tools should come nestled in their own custom carrying case. That's Festool, my friend. 